what's up great community this is gray here and we uh are gonna do a little something different i mean it's not totally different we're gonna go over some uh some articles uh but initially you know i want to uh talk a little bit about the fourth of july uh and a uh you know i found an actual pretty decent like a little article or whatnot that kind of goes into a little bit of the history of the fourth of july now a lot of you folks may be aware um and some may not you know, some people ask, well, why do we do fireworks on the 4th of July and stuff like that? You know, we're very inquisitive people and we're always wondering why we do certain things, you know, why why certain holidays are they're here and what we do and why we do what we do. <laughs> Anyways, folks, uh, one thing I do want to mention, and uh, let me, I like to apologize always in advance, is that uh, I will, I most, I'm pretty sure that I will not be in this premiere um, but I like to do the premieres so that you, the community, can interact with each other, uh, those who choose to do so and whatnot, because I was invited. You know, it's a, it's a holiday weekend, uh, 4th of July is tomorrow, and uh, that's why I kind of wanted to talk about it today uh, on the premiere so that you folks can interact if you guys are happen to be in the premiere. And uh, because I was invited to go, you know, on a boat and go fishing with the family, uh, and as well as some of my other uh, brothers uh, from... Uh, you know, that, that, uh, that I'm acquainted with. I, I'm trying to, I like to not give too much information out there, you know what I mean? But, uh, all in all, you know, it's, uh, I'm enjoying, I'm going to be enjoying today as well as, uh, tomorrow, lots of plans and stuff like that. I, I do have a video, uh, if I get it time and edited enough, I will, uh, drop that for you folks. Uh, I know you guys have been wanting to see it, uh, uh, you know, the little sweet potato kind of update thing, uh, you know, it's, they're doing very well, and I'm going to show a couple other things in that video that pertain to sweet potatoes and a little bit of how the garden's doing in this heat uh, as of late. So uh, let me stop rambling and get into the Sunday shift report, a.k.a. the crap has hit the fan. Uh, you know, I just it, it sucks that you have uh, to discuss, you know, the direction our country is going into. And I always say to the aspect of, you know, if our forefathers could see the direction of our country, uh, I would assume that there would be a <laughs> another uh, revolutionary war, civil war, something to that extent. You kind of get what I'm saying, uh, but it's just like a. I just can only imagine, you know, the direction, uh, their thought process, and what they expected the country to be like in 200 and I think we're 246 uh, years. It's roughly somewhere right around there. I, I might not be spot on. Don't have my math. It's early. Uh, so I've only had one cup of coffee, uh, working on my second here. <clears throat> but anyways, uh, you know, I just wanted that, but uh, anyways, let me, let me get to the point. Thank you all for being here and taking the time out of your day and your holiday weekend to come and check out the video. Or if you happen to be in the premiere, I truly appreciate that as well as you mods. I know a lot of people are doing things with their families, just barbecues, uh, people are out on boats, uh, like myself, and uh, everybody's doing things, you know, celebrating this amazing holiday uh, back in July 4th of 1776, you know, we the people, we the people. Anyways, folks, uh, so let me start off with that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring it up so that you guys can see it if you care to read along or just listen to me uh, read this, but uh, I thought about, you know, most folks probably know some of this information, but also the fact that if anybody ever happens to come across this, again, like I said, People, you know, like my children and others that may not get the education that they're supposed to get in today's school system, maybe this will benefit those folks as well. Anyways, this is why is the 4th of July important to us? The tradition of celebrating 4th of July as Independence Day goes back to the 18th century. It was on July 4th, 1776, a glorious day, that the Second Continental Congress in the, United, in the U.S. adopted the Declaration of Independence. Uh, Americans celebrate the 4th of July or Independence Day uh, by organizing parades and barbecues. Uh, they also uh, wore red, white, and blue gear on this day. Fireworks are considered to be a very important part of the Independence Day celebration in U.S. history and tradition. Uh, and, you know, my concern is, is I know you guys have seen some of the, the crazy far left folks, uh, you know, trying to take away our pride as Americans uh, and trying to, you know, boycott the 4th of July and boycott our independence. Even here locally uh, in Florida, the city of, or it's not local for me, it's in the middle of the state, Orlando, which is known as a uh, a blue area uh, with the politics over there, had to walk back their comments uh, due to how they upset a lot of folks 
uh, in their little 4th of July uh, kind of uh, Twitter, I don't know if it was a Twitter post or whatever that they did, uh, and I was glad they had to walk it back. You know, no one should take that away from we the people, us as Americans. Anyways, let me continue. Um, it says U.S. Independence Day history, so let's talk about it. You know, it says while the 4th of July is a big day in the current times, it was on July 2nd, 1776, that 12 out of the 13 American colonies officially declared, uh, uh, officially, uh, sorry, officially decided to separate from Great Britain and demand for independence through a vote by the Continental Congress. And then two days after that uh, is when the final, we finally got the other uh, colony in line with us. <laughs> but anyways, uh, where was I? Uh, the 13 American colonies voted to adopt the Declaration of Independence, uh, which everyone should be familiar with, and work towards a goodbye gesture to the British rule. Uh, it says the celebration of 4th July honors the signing of the Declaration of Independence by the founding fathers of the U.S. on July 4th, 1776. Among the many names, Thomas Jefferson, who was renowned statesman and diplomat, along with political philosopher Benjamin Franklin, I can speak, man, renounced the British Empire and pronounced the North American colonies as free states. And that's what a lot of folks may not understand is, you know, when they look at government, when we, the United States is, as you hear it, you know, what I mean by that is a lot, no other countries like ours. And what I mean specifically is that we are a, you know, a republic of states or, you know, some people say a union of states, but we are s states inside of a country. So, yes, you had the federal government. Uh, who like to, you know, sometimes <laughs> tell folks what to do, but they don't, uh, luckily, if you live in a good state, uh, you know, depending on where you live, you know, Florida, uh, Missouri, um, where else, West Virginia, uh, Texas, and a few others, you know, uh, you have a great political environment, or majority at least, of like, you know, here we have Governor DeSantis, which a lot of you folks are familiar with, uh, and it does scare me to the fact that if he runs for a president, uh, which he'll, I think he'll do well uh, as a president. I mean, look what he's done for Florida. But my concern is, is who will be our governor at that point. Anyways, uh, where was I? Sorry, I get sidetracked because things pop into my head as uh, as I'm thinking of these things and reading this stuff. Anyways, the celebration of the 4th of July. Uh, nope, I was already there. Da, da, da. All right. Why are fireworks important on the 4th of July? It says... It was uh, in Philadelphia City that the tradition uh, to set off fireworks started on 4 July 1777. It was during the first organized celebration of Independence Day, which uh, the salute of 13 gunshots uh, was conducted in the morning and evening. And believe it or not, folks, this still happens in certain places. Uh, they still adhere to uh, to our forefathers and what they did to celebrate this, uh, this day. Uh, it was conducted in the morning and the evening. Uh, anyways, it says it was the country's first formal 4th of July celebration uh, and a point of pride for the people during that time. Following the uh, following that in 1778, George Washington, uh, who was then a uh, general in the Revolutionary Army, issued his troops with a double rum ration to cheer for the day. <laughs> and, you know, if you've ever been in the military, anytime you get a little bonus, uh, it's awesome. So I can imagine how those folks felt back then. It says, however, it is to be noted that John Adams... Uh, who was also one of the founding fathers of the U.S., had envisioned fireworks to be a part of the Independence Day festivities before the Declaration of Independence was signed on the July 4th, 1776. Since then, it has become a ritual with Americans to celebrate the 4th of July with grand fireworks show. So just a little bit of history there. You know, uh, some of it might be new to some folks and some of it may not. Uh, you know, it just uh, I wanted to share that tidbit of information just because, you know, tomorrow uh, is the full celebration of the 4th. Because uh, tomorrow is the fourth, today is the third, and I just wanted to discuss that. So that's why when I consider some people say, you know, well, the Fourth of July is not till this day. I'm like, well, it's a holiday weekend. And when you look at history, like I said, so this this was in the works prior to that. And you know, if you look at July second, uh, and so on and so forth, uh, it all plays into this great day of American independence uh, from the British rule. At this point, <laughs> who knows who rules the world at this point? Anyways, I don't want to get into that. I don't want to get into a tangent. <laughs> I'm doing some research on a group of uh, rich elite folks uh, that have been running this country behind uh, behind the scenes for a long time. And some of you folks may know who they are, but specifically one family in general who, uh, because I'm diving into the Federal Reserve, I want to know the history dissecting the Federal Reserve a little bit. Because believe it or not, folks, uh, if you 
do enough research, you realize the Federal Reserve is quite a powerful entity, and most folks have no clue who runs the Federal Reserve. Anyways, let's go ahead and move forward with that. So I do have a couple of things in regards to the fourth, uh, and also some weird things. Uh, you know, I want to look at a few things in regards to what's going on in our country, uh, as well as abroad, because you know a lot of people will focus in on what's happening local, but we need to pay attention to what's happening abroad because. As I always say, it can affect us, and it will affect us. Uh, so these are things that you need to pay attention to uh, sometimes when I bring up some of this, uh, these comments and whatnot, you know? Anyways, what I first want to do is inflation, right? We're, everybody has seen it. It's hurting everyone's pockets, at least for most folks like myself. You know, if you're a low-income, middle-income, no matter where you on that bracket, I'm assuming not too many people in the elite bracket watch my channel. Uh, the, the, the billionaires, right? So let's bring this up because this is going to be a lot more expensive for folks this year. Uh, remember when, uh, when corn pop last year was bragging about people were going to save, I don't know, however many cents on Thanksgiving or this or that. I forget what they were boasting about. Maybe it was the fourth too. I think you're going to save like 20 cents or something like that. And they were bragging about that. And, it, and now look at where we're at today, you know, a year later, just think about that folks. Let that set in. It says, uh, U.S. consumers can expect to pay 17% more to eat on Independence Day in 2022, according to a new report from the American Farm Bureau Federation. The annual study confirmed that the average cost of summer cookout for 10 people would cost about 70 bucks, and the inc this is an increase from $10 from 2021. Now, some people say, well, $10 is not much, but to some folks it is because they're paying out everywhere else. You're, you're paying more at the pump, you're paying more for food and groceries, and, uh, Matter of fact, uh, I had a conversation uh, with the lady said that she doesn't know what she's going to do because when you hear of a rent increase, you know, when your landlord calls, if you're a renter uh, and usually get a rent increase, usually it might be like a hundred bucks, maybe 150 bucks. No, these people are, are getting rent increases anywhere from five to $700 on top of already high rent. You know, people pay anywhere from 1500 to $2,000 on average in this area for like a small apartment. And just imagine you're paying, uh, you know, twenty five hundred to uh, to three thousand dollars for a small apartment, uh, and on top of that, you have to pay more at the pump. You have to pay more for your food. You have to pay more for clothes. All kinds of stuff like that. Speaking of which, a lot of you folks, if you are any Floridians, happen to be watching this. Hopefully, you're aware that we are in Freedom Week, uh, something that Governor DeSantis set up, uh, where you can save money. Uh, you don't have to pay taxes. On anything associated with, you know, like camping supplies, hiking and fishing, and the list goes on. So you guys should make sure that you can check that out and look what's on that list and uh, save a few bucks. You know what I mean? Uh, who wants to pay taxes, right? Anyways, it says the authors of the study assessed many of Americans' favorite cookout foods. They found that the price of two pounds of ground beef surged 36% to $11.12. Uh, two pounds of boneless and skinless chicken breast jumped 33% uh, to $8.99, and three pounds of center-cut pork chops climbed 31% to $15.26. Now, here's one that blows me away. Is 32 ounces of pork and beans rose 33%. God, do you remember when you can get this stuff for like $0.99 cents for a big old can of pork and beans? You know, you buy the big number 10 version of it. It's just insane the way uh, the, the cost of food has gone up. You know, some people say, oh, yeah, but inflation has dropped a percentage or, or whatever, you know, a couple of points. But they're not looking at the big picture. They're not looking at food inflation specifically. Uh, that's That, to me, affects the, the American people more than anything because we need food to survive. You need to, for, for sustenance, you have to eat, right? Especially yourself and your children and your family and other ones. You know what I mean? You don't want to see people starve. You don't want to see people go without. Uh, man, it's just... It's just insane um and speaking on the food thing uh, do i want to go there first uh, yeah we'll go there to heck with it we'll jump back and forth a little bit i want to bring up russia real quick because uh <laughs> the the russians are are you know a lot of people and, and I, I i'm not saying i agree with putin at all i don't want anybody to take that out of context uh but you can't say the man is you know the people are trying to say you know he's you're trying to compare him to like corn pop sometimes where he's just he's you know he's sick he's not all there he's missing his mind and stuff like that it's it, if it's not him uh and hit and it's his party or his cabinet members or whoever helps runs russia uh they've been doing things to fight off these uh embargoes and whatnot and sanctions from 
the Western uh, civilization or Western culture, you know, like the UK and the United States and so on and so off. Uh, and this is going to affect people, folks, no matter how you look at it, because you have to look at where things come from, where, you know, sure, the United States, we grow certain crops here, we grow certain things here. But of course, if you look at the situation with the drought and everything else and the, uh, you know, the shortage of, of labor, uh, fertilizer costs, and, and, you know, the list just goes on, we've discussed it. Uh, this all affects us here in the United States and the farmers specifically. But anyways, let me get into this article. It says, Russia facing sanctions from the West for its invasion of Ukraine will now export grains to other nations only in exchange for rubles. Okay? Uh, not U.S. dollars. Uh, rubles. Uh, <laughs> and like I said, just just think about that. You know what I mean? Uh, look how it's affected the fuel aspect in places uh, outside of the U.S. You know, Germany, parts of the U.K., you know, and other places, Right? And other countries have already bended to the knee and said, yeah, well, you know, we'll pay you whatever you want to be paid. We need that fuel. We need energy because energy is one of the big three, you know what I mean, uh, that makes this world spin. Anyways, in addition to grains, the Russian government has added sunflower oil and extracted meal, uh, extracted meal to the list of uh, export items to be paid in rubles. A resolution to this effect was adopted on Friday. Russia is the largest exporter of wheat in the world and a major supplier of sunflower seeds. Uh, so uh, a lot of you folks, uh, matter of fact, when I do my garden video, uh, hopefully, ho well, I already have that part done. Maybe I'll add that in there. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Uh, but uh, every year I've been growing, and I, I, sometimes I'll grow one or two sunflowers. And what I'm doing with those sunflowers is I'm trying to get them used to my environment, uh, getting them hardened for zone 9B, and uh, I'm harvesting all the seeds. I'm not eating them. I'm harvesting them to grow them later because the plant that I grew this year uh, is uh, from last year's seeds. Uh, because I'm trying to embody that plant, that DNA and that seed uh, to be, to be, I guess, uh, to strengthen its capability in growing in my environment. Because what about if I need that? You know, what about, uh, you know, what I, maybe I want to eat sunflower seeds, but what about if you want to make sunflower oil in that process? You know, right? Just things like that that, that cross my mind. Anyways, the government uh, resolution also extends to provisions to pay uh, for exported sunflower oil and meal duties in rubles until August 31st, 2023. And I was intrigued by that date, August 31st, 2023. I was very, uh, just, uh, it just struck me. Like, why that date? You know, why why August 23rd, 2023? Uh, just because I'm inquisitive, you know, and I'm always wondering why, you know, a date is set like that. Anyways, as a part of this payment mechanism, the base price for calculating wheat export duties has been set for 15,000 rubles or $263 per ton. Again, they either will pay in rubles or they won't get wheat or sunflower oil as well as, you know, everything else that they've made uh, other countries pay in rubles. Basically oil, gas, and so on and so forth. So you will see, uh, you will probably see an increase uh, in those goods, you know, and think what it, we, I, I've done a video on this. I think we might have did even on a live stream, but just think when people think wheat, well, you know, that's just wheat or that's just sunflower oil. What you have to really look at is what is sunflower oil used in? What is sunflower, you know, that that's the basis. That's an ingredient based thing, right? Just like wheat. Wheat is uh consumed in different ways, but it's also added to a lot of other products. So when the cost on that specific ingredient, wheat or sunflower oil goes up, uh, you know, where the demand is still there, but the supply might be restrictive because Russia decides to do this, the cost on everything associated with that will go up as well. You can't just hyper-focus on just the little things. You have to look at the big picture so that you're better prepared for what's going to come down eventually down the pipe, you know? Anyways, um, speaking of food, uh, let's bring up the Dutch farmers. Uh, you know, like I said, there's just so many things that are happening everywhere that you look and, uh, we have, a, uh, we have viewers outside of the U S I have lots of viewers, you know, uh, you know, from Belgium to Sweden, to South Africa, to Australia, you know, everywhere. So it's, it's not just us. It's, it's a world problem, uh, that's happening with our food supply. And a lot of folks still won't grasp that. They just don't get it. But, to each his own. If that's if they if I can't get through to them, uh, or others can't get through to them, uh, if if things do go to that direction, to that really critical direction, uh, I really truly feel in my heart sorry for those folks 
uh, as well as their children and families and loved ones. Anyways, it says Dutch farmers are continuing their demonstration against a government climate policy uh, that officials expect to end May uh, many farmers' livelihoods with organizers on Telegram planning July 4th protests they say uh, will flatten the whole of the Netherlands. Uh, and if uh, there's a lot of folks that live out in the Netherlands, you know, uh, and it's, you know, farmers' livelihoods. That, that's a shame, you know what I mean? These people, you know, some, most of these farmers are, are is generational. Uh, and then you have a government, you know, destroying these people's livelihoods. It's not going to only destroy their livelihoods, but for generations to come. I, Like I said, I always look beyond the initial little tidbit there and look at how how is this just gonna, not going to affect me, but how is it going to affect down the road? You know what I mean? So with these farmers here, it's not just going to affect their livelihoods. It's going to affect their livelihoods from generations to come. Anyways, the message calls on the concerned farmers and citizens to organize their own regional actions with the goal of closing all distribution centers for food and supplies or food supplies and all major polluters until the government changes its plan. Uh, crazy. Anyways, just imagine that they they want the goal is closing all distribution centers of food supplies and all major polluters. <laughs> That's their call. Anyways, until the government changes its plans. Uh, one viral call for a July 4th protest came from a large truckers uh, telegram group suggesting that some truckers in the Netherlands may find themselves in solidarity with the nation's agriculturalist. Um, and maybe I could be reading into this wrong, but to me, this should be a concern for those citizens uh, that live there, that's, you know, that depend on this. Because, like I said, you're, it's affecting the farmers, uh, and then it's going to affect food distribution uh, as well as food in general. Uh, but some of these other countries are a lot more intelligent than our government in regards to, you know, people have told, you know, you, we've, we've, you've seen other countries tell their people like, hey, you should prepare. Uh, you should have this much food, this much this, this much that. Uh, you know, sometimes people are like, well, you just need a few days or a couple of weeks of food. Uh, not realizing that something could go last longer. You know, I'd rather, you know, <laughs> I know it's redundant, but I'd rather have than not have. That's the huge thing here, folks, when it comes to prepping uh, and preparedness in general is it's better to have an excess than not have anything at all. Uh, because let's say, you know, you're just an average citizen and you listen to whatever reasoning that you have and you say, well, you know, I just I have an extra week supply of food. Well, what about if that crisis goes longer? What about if the crisis intensifies? What if it, that res it doesn't get resolved in a timely manner or doesn't get resolved at all? Where would you be at that point? So why not go a little further, build on that week, make it three weeks, make it a month, make it six months, make it a year, and so on and so forth. I think folks should not stop uh, just because they, sh they want to suffice for a week or two of uh, additional food, water, and supplies. I think they should continue to do so. I know space can be limited depending on where you live, like in apartments and places like that, uh, but maybe you should drop a plan. Uh, have, a goal have a goal set in your mind of what you want to do and you know, maybe enlist others, uh, get other family members on board if you can, uh, and utilize whatever space is not being used. Uh, and some people have gotten re really creative with stuff, you know, under couches, uh, you know, built certain things behind the, what, like different closet spaces. I've seen people get extremely creative with preps and putting them in certain spots. Uh, so you have to think outside the box when it comes to some of the things. I know a little bit off topic in regards to the whole Dutch thing, but it just, it brings up, you know, Again, you know, thoughts in my uh, in my head that I want to share with you, the viewers, while I'm doing this. Where do we want to go from here? Uh, you know, crazy enough, a lot of you know who Jeff Bezos is. You know, uh, if you know anything about Amazon, which I think, I don't know if he's, has he fully stepped away from Amazon? I don't remember. I, I, I just don't have a, that in front of me. But it's funny when you see the left uh, beating on the left. <laughs> As a matter of fact, there was some new polling out just recently. It was it was a high percentage that the majority of Democrats are kind of distancing themselves uh, from corn pop in this administration because they know and they see what's coming down the pipe. Uh, and, uh, you know, playing the blame game is just not going to work. So I thought this was interesting. I wanted to share this article. Uh, Jeff Bezos <laughs> criticizing the uh, corn pop. Let's bring it up. <laughs> Anyways, this is Amazon finder multi-billionaire Jeff Bezos criticized uh, Corn Pop administration messaging uh, messaging around gas prices and rising inflation. On Saturday, uh, the president suggested on Twitter that gas stations across the United States 
uh, charge customers less for gasoline to offset historically high gas prices. Because sure, it's it's the gas station's fault, right? It's their fault. They're they're making the prices uh, what they are. Uh, you know, these some of some of these gas stations are mom and pops, and some are massive conglomerates. Uh, but you know, some people will utilize the name, let's say like Exxon or Chevron or whatever they happen to be, uh, and it's still an independent mom and pop type of business uh, that runs it. So. If you if they were to say okay well we're gonna do uh, gas for a couple of bucks you know to uh, to help folks out because he said so that's gonna cut him cut into their bottom line and most likely to go out of business uh, matter of fact there was an article not too long ago where a, a gas station manager or something like that messed something up and people were getting gas for like a dollar something somewhere uh, and he got fired because just imagine how many people saw that. And with social media being the way it is, it probably spread like wildfire in that community, and everybody is probably getting gas while they could at that price because people are struggling. Anyways, it says, uh, it says, ouch, Bezos wrote in a response, inflation is far too uh, important, a problem for the White House to keep making statements like this. It's either straight ahead misdirection or deep misunderstanding of basic market dynamics. Earlier, Corn Pop's uh, Twitter account wrote that he has a message to gas stations this is a time of war and global peril. Bring down price. Uh, bring down the price you are charging at the pump uh, to reflect the cost you're paying for the product, and do it now. Uh, from the Twitter post, it's not clear how gas stations might accomplish Corn Pop's uh, Twitter demand, which was uh, praised by, believe it or not, the Chinese Communist Party uh, media account. <laughs> Go figure, right? Uh, others, however, criticize Corn Pop's post. It says, uh, you know. As well as everyone uh, that the Federal Reserve actually, uh, you know as well as everyone that the Federal Reserve actually sets the prices uh, through rampant inflation, wrote the Libertarian Party's account. Uh, a lot of you know, folks know uh, what the Libertarian Party is. Uh, they have some interesting views, uh, especially when it comes to the Second Amendment. It says when forty percent, uh, when forty. Now this is a crazy. This is actually this is factual, folks. You can check it out yourself. When forty percent of the dollars in the world was printed in one year. 40% of U.S. dollars printed in one year. Insane. Inflation sets in and prices skyrocket. Just yesterday you were blaming Russia. We see through your scam. So he's not only distancing himself uh, from the, the Democratic Party, independents, uh, libertarians, and the list goes on. It's. I'm. I'm assuming this. This is my opinion. My opinion only. I'm assuming that he may go down as probably one of the worst presidents in U.S. history. That's where I see this going, folks. We're only halfway there. We still got another two years of this. Another two years. You can only hope that there is this massive red wave come in November, and they can kind of block a lot of these policies uh, that he's trying to put forth and. As well as the uh, you know the crazies like uh, Schumer, Pelosi, and the list goes on. AOC and Ilhan Omar and the Squad, as they're called, and uh, hopefully resolve some of these issues. Anyways, uh, and speaking of this, uh, corporate America is making a mass exodus, and this is going to affect these blue cities tremendously. Believe it or not, these blue states, blue cities, uh, or both, in general, because when a massive corporation for let's use Tesla for an example, pulls up roots and it moves its uh, place of business to somewhere else to let's say a red state which is more conducive to, uh, you know, either not necessarily their views but uh, to their profit to their bottom line because it's always about money, folks. No matter how you look at it, uh, but matter of fact, I just saw something. I, I, I there was several states that are actually increasing gas tax, and one of them was California. I'm thinking the citizens of California, aren't they already aren't they already under, you know, this huge economic strain and they're going to increase gas tax at a time like this? And they stay living there. They stay voting the way they do. It doesn't make any sense. Anyways, let's bring this up. It says Caterpillar and Citadel, which in June announced their exit out of Illinois, uh, are only the latest firms to leave high-tax, high-regulation states. Tesla, Hewlett-Packard, Oracle, uh, and Remington are also among hundreds of companies flocking out of California, Illinois, New York, and New Jersey uh, to business-friendly places like Texas, Florida, 
Arizona, Tennessee. Kind of see the uh, the trend there, folks. Uh, anyways, relocating companies have spanned industries, including tech, finance, media, heavy manufacturing, autos, and firearms. Uh, there is a great migration going on and I expect it to accceleration. Glenn ha Hammer, president of the Texas Association of Business, told the Epoch Times, when the Caterpillars and the Elon Musks relocate, it's an advertisement to the entire country uh, and their entire world uh, that something positive is going on in that state and there is a multiplier effect. According to a 2022 survey of 700 CEOs, the top states for business were Texas, Florida, Tennessee, Arizona, and North Carolina. The worst... The worst were California, go figure, New York, go figure, Illinois, go figure, New Jersey, and Washington, go figure, right? I know I'm a little redundant with that word, but that should tell you folks something. And here's the, here's, here, it's not only going to affect, th this is going to affect a lot of folks. When a major company pulls up roots, uh, that is a lot of money going with them, a lot of jobs going with them, a lot of economic growth going with them. So, as you see, a lot of states like Texas and Florida and so on are trying to get countries or get countries uh, to businesses uh, to set up shop here in, in their states because they know how beneficial it will be for the economy of that state. Uh, and just imagine if there was ever a succession, you know, down the road uh, where the states split. You know, you have your blue states and your red states, and like they succeed from the union and whatnot, and uh, and all the major you know, producers and businesses and companies are in the red states. Imagine how all these blue states would falter. But again, they continue to vote the way they do. Do they not pay attention? Do they not see what's happening? Or is it just like a cesspool of the elite and rich that just don't care about the common man? Speaking of uh, states, uh, one other thing that I had here I wanted to bring up uh, Missouri's governor uh, did something pretty intriguing, uh, Mike Parson. Anyways, uh, he signed a new election law uh, on Wednesday that will require voters to show photo ID to vote in the coming uh, general elections. Just imagine if other states were to follow suit. Maybe our elections would get a little bit more fair. Maybe. Who knows? But if you actually had to show identification... Uh, you know, to have a concealed weapons permit, you have to have identification. To drive a vehicle, you have to have identification. Uh, and the list goes on why you have to have identification. In this day and age, you have to have identification to travel. So why not something as important as voting? Well, Missouri Governor Mike Parsons is making that law. Anyway, it said the new law, House Bill 1878, requires voters to show one of the following photo IDs at polling sites. Non-expired Missouri driver's license, non-expired state non-driver's license, like your state IDs, other documents issued by the state or federal government with a photo and recent uh, confirmable signature or photo identification issued by the Missouri National Guard, U.S. Armed Forces, or U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs. So you have to have a valid identification to cast your vote. I think if all states were to do that, you would see a huge difference in how things play out. Uh, because it, now it won't resolve cheating all, and it, it it won't resolve all cheating, but it it'll it'll definitely put a dent in that situation, uh, where you can see a more of a free and fair election system, and they're going to use stuff like racism and other things, you know, people's economic status, and say that this is going to affect them, and blah 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 blah. Well, those folks drive too, those folks travel as well, uh, so. <laughs> You're telling me that, you know, like here in Florida, when you go get your driver's license, they say, would you like to register to vote? And they'll give you your voter registration ID card there. Uh, so in hand in hand, you have your, your driver's license uh, or identification, however you look at it, and uh, your voter ID card. So how is that how is that going to affect people that are more impoverished than others or, uh, you know, affect a specific, uh, you know, ethnic uh, majority or minority of a group of people? It just doesn't make sense. Uh, but they're going to use that as their crutch uh, to, you know, push back as they always do, specifically in blue areas or in a, currently in our federal government, like pl people like Chuck Schumer who are trying to pass crazy legislation so that, you know, cheating become rampant. And, uh, God, you know, folks, it's always when you, when you when you look at anything, it's truly all about the money. 
uh, in business, in politics, and in life in general. People are, you know, they, they get this, it's, it's just a greed of money. And I know we, we would all wish we could be rich. But me personally, if I could live back in the, the day, you know what I mean? I'd probably be a lot healthier for that fact. But if I could just have a piece of property, be left alone, have some chickens, some goats, a cow, some pigs, and grow my own food, I honestly feel that I would be truly content without, you know, breaking, you know, without having to pay taxes and do all this other crazy stuff that you have to do in order to survive in life uh, this day and age. Uh, but that's my take on it. That's my take on it. Folks, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I want to say thank you to everyone who uh, decided to join uh, the premiere. Again, I apologize that I wasn't here, but I couldn't pass up that opportunity to go fishing with the family on a boat uh, this uh, this holiday weekend. So a lot of you folks are truly understanding and very supportive of the channel, so I appreciate that. Uh, from the bottom of my heart, I truly, 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 truly do. Uh, you guys are wonderful folks. The community is just outstanding, so helpful, so generous. Uh, you guys are amazing people. So please be safe out there, folks. Uh, you know, things can get chaotic out there uh, on the 4th of July. There's lots of crowds. There are some crazies out there. But enjoy your time with your family. Enjoy this great day of independence. Be there and just uh, remember, you're not alone. You're not alone, folks. Uh, and just uh, please be safe. And God bless this amazing country. And God bless every one of you. This is Gray Man. I'm out. I'll see you guys on the rebound. Stay safe. <laughs>